roasted asparagus. Down around 10 pounds. Please. Beans. Welcome back to another episode of Real with Ryan. It is another fun experiment. This experiment is going to be another diet experiment. I am going to try out the slow carb diet. This is a diet uh, that Tim Ferriss has come up with from the four hour body. I'm a huge fan of Tim Ferriss, his podcasts and books. And the whole point of the slow carb diet is to lose fat. One thing that I've always loved to do, at least for the past year or two, is experiment with different diets. I do time restricted feeding or intermittent fasting every day and love what that does, both for my weight and health, but for my energy as well. I've tried going vegetarian. I've tried drinking a gallon of milk every day for a week. I've even tried not eating for five days in a row. So here we go. Wanted to get a little bit of a before and after. This is me kind of relaxed. I did work out today, so um, even though this is the four shot, might have some some I mean muscles, and I'll include a link to or a picture. I'll include a picture here somewhere uh, showing where I was at before I did the water fast. By no means. Am I, uh, am I fat, but I do want to just see what it's like if I can kind of cut away the fat and I definitely am not fat, um, but I've never had abs before. And I kind of want to see if doing the slow carb diet, I'd be able to actually cut away that fat and kind of have abs for a beach vacation. Also wanted to see what I'm weighing in at. So this is just in my underwear, kind of in the evening. 175. Tonight should be the last night on my current diet. I'll go over just the five rules um, that are pretty important for the slow carb diet and how I'm going to adhere to them. So rule number one is no white carbohydrates. Um, basically what that is is any form of breads, any form of rice, any form of potatoes, those big carbs that we typically eat um, and are usually staples for you know the standard American diet none of that um, so the reason why it's called slow carb is things like beans or lentils have carbohydrates in them so it's not no carb um, but it's doing slow carb so beans and stuff is okay the second rule of the slow carb diet is try to stick to the same type of meals. Keeping meals relatively the same and similar makes it much, much easier to plan and stick to. Uh, this one will be a challenge for me because I like a lot of variety in my diet, uh, but I do have a handful of staples uh, that I'll kind of get into in a moment. The third rule is don't drink your calories. So no soda, uh, no sugary beverages, um, you know, no beer or alcohol, um, with the exception of red wine. Um, so it says there's a glass or two of what red wine per night is acceptable. Um, I'm not a huge red wine drinker and usually don't drink uh, on weeknights, so I'm gonna avoid that. Uh, but on the weekends, whenever I do uh, tend to drink, maybe on a Friday or Saturday night, I'll, I'll try to grab the red wine instead of other alcoholic beverages. The fourth rule, and this is a big one, is no fruit. Um, fruit contains a lot of sugar, um, and it just turns out that humans don't need to eat as much fruit as we tend to eat. So this is tough. I love fruit. I like bananas, apples, watermelon, uh, you name it, I eat fruit. Um, but no fruit on this diet. The last rule, and another kind of crazy rule for this diet, is you get one cheat day per week. One day where you can eat as much of everything as you want. Um, which is kind of crazy and counterintuitive, but the thinking behind this is that if you do have one day where you can just go nuts, um, it helps you satisfy your cravings. If you are building a craving for a certain food throughout the week, uh, you can have that food on the cheat day where you can just go crazy and it's supposed to help uh, stick to this diet for a longer period of time. 
Um, but I'll go through a few of the meals I'm planning on eating, some of the things that are safe to eat. Uh, but generally, it is you know supposed to be lean proteins and then you know vegetables um, and lentils. So those are kind of the things that you're supposed to be eating. I'll go through my meal list and talk through a few things. I'm gonna be eating lots of protein because I want to not lose muscle mass. Yes, I want to lean up, uh, but I don't want to lose much muscle. Now, if I am losing weight, I probably will lose some muscle, but if I have a higher intake of protein and lean protein, as well as stay working out, hopefully those muscle loss should be uh, a minimum. But I'll be eating chicken. Uh, chicken either breast or thighs. I like thighs. I think they're tastier. Not quite as lean, but I'll make that sacrifice. Be eating salmon and tuna and eggs. Uh, primarily egg whites, um, but you can have a whole egg in there with the yolk for additional flavor, but primarily egg whites. So those are kind of the main sources of protein um, as far as meats go. Um, and then, you know, as many beans as you want. And beans are really important here because they are big for calories and getting to your uh, caloric level. So, you know, obviously if you burn more calories than you eat, you'll lose weight. Um, but if you are undernourished or don't eat enough calories, you'll be lethargic. Um, and so beans and lentils really can help make that up. Um, so I plan on eating a lot of black beans, red beans, or so soybeans, um, either as uh, additions to dishes or like a bean salad type thing. Uh, and then we have the vegetables, which is relatively straightforward. Many cruciferous ve vegetables or other vegetables. So spinach, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, peas, um, green beans, those types of things are all good. Uh, but that's really just it. Tonight's the last night. I'm going to uh, eat some good food, enjoy that, and uh, we're gonna start uh, tomorrow. And I'll uh, you know, have some clips of the food I'm eating, how I'm feeling, and then maybe some weight loss along the way. Um, I plan on doing this for two weeks to see some results. I'd like to do it for the three to four weeks until my friend's wedding, um, but we will uh, we will keep you up to date. We got a, a nice bag, plenty of vegetables. Gonna be ready to uh, chow down. Here is meal number one on uh, my journey on the slow carb diet. Um, it is egg whites and spinach. So uh, typically I, I do fasting, I, I do intermittent fasting until noon. Uh, so it's uh, right before eight o'clock. So typically I don't eat this early, um, but like I said, I'm trying to get protein in first 30 minutes of the day. Okay, first lunch of the slow carb diet. Here's what we're working with. We were working with uh, black beans, green beans, and then some cooked sausage. So the black beans and green beans are great. Um, the cooked sausage is not quite as lean of a protein as I could be eating. Basically, this is a fairly standard lunch except for um, usually I would have rice, potatoes, um, or something along that for lunch, um, and instead it's gonna be beans. I made salmon and Brussels sprouts, which I'll be eating tonight and for the next few days. It is the end of day one on this low carb diet, and day one was a success. It was food that I normally would eat, maybe tweaked a little bit, kind of replace the things like rice with beans. But luckily, I like beans. I have not shied away from just eating a can of beans for a meal before. Um, so overall, was good. Uh, my energy was also pretty solid most of the day. Didn't really have many updates yesterday, but yesterday was a good day. I uh, was able to eat basically the same exact food I did the day before. Um, the other night I cooked salmon. And so yesterday, both for lunch and dinner, uh, my meal was a piece of salmon, uh, some Brussels sprouts, uh, some beans. I've got a good feeling that I'm gonna be slimming up. Uh, one thing I'm doing workout-wise that's different is I'm still working out. Basically, everything is the same, uh, but I'm trying to do more ab workouts. So here is uh, day three. Here's kind of the meals today. So we got um, some grilled chicken thighs relatively simple salt and pepper 
um, some peas and some black beans. So this is probably gonna be both uh, lunch and dinner, uh, but that's, that's really on the menu today. What I've ate kind of the last handful of meals, uh, I still had a omelet with spinach. I basically eat the protein and veggies first, and then if I'm still hungry, then I kind of top myself off with, with some beans, so. Okay, it is the morning of the fifth day. Checking the weight. And 170, so um, definitely down a little bit in weight. Not too much, but down some. Um, not an official overview of physique, but here's kind of where my physique's looking like. Um, definitely in the past few days, it feels like my gut has shrunk a little bit. I am really excited. Um, and I just got finished mowing and back from a workout and it is the end of day six for the slow carb diet. Um, and I really have followed it to a T. I've been really, really good about it. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up. I did cut my, my belly hair today so I could see my stomach more, which probably helps. Um, but in one week, I've lost probably three to four pounds. We'll, we'll tell in the morning, um, but really have, have cut up and I've been doing more ab workouts, but besides that, just lifting heavy in the gym. Um, and like, I can see progress myself, which within seven days is kind of crazy. Typically I'm someone that doesn't see a ton of body change very rapidly, but this really does seem to be doing the trick. Um, so super, super excited. I'm gonna keep on doing this. I have one cheat day at my disposal, kind of one per week type thing. I'm gonna try to not use that as long as I can, um, but if I really just feel a craving for eating something that is not on the diet, um, at this point I will allow myself to do so and that will count as my cheat day. It is day seven. Today was the first day I have uh, broken the protocol. So today will officially be a cheat day um, and more specifically just lunch. So I had a work event uh, all morning and then we had a taco company catering lunch. Man, if I really, if I really tried, I could just scrape basically only the beef off the tacos and eat like beef and lettuce, but melted cheese was on there. And I was like, you know what? I've done really good in this week. Um, I was kind of wanting to push the cheat day off to maybe sat this Saturday or Friday. So um, I had a full day, but liking the progress so far. And I was like, you know what? Well, the, the tacos are catered. It's a free lunch. They're gonna be great. Um, so I just went ahead and ate the meal. So I had just a normal tacos meal with uh, chips and chips and salsa. Um, so that's the first deviation from the diet so far. And um, that's kind of like, you know, that has put me on a cheat day. So I could have kind of just gone back and said, hey, this whole day was a cheat day, but you know, I felt like getting back on plan. So for dinner, having uh, the chicken thighs Emily cooked last night, uh, made some nice uh, roasted asparagus. And of course, for dessert, beans. Had a great pool day today, went out to the pool. I actually brought my beans and tuna out to the pool. So everyone was drinking drinking beer and eating uh, chips and stuff. And I, had, I did have one chip, but I snacked at the pool on my beans and tuna. So stuck to the diet today, all good. Tonight, um, cooking up some ground turkey, which would be great. And Emily's going to make herself some crepes because she wants some crepes. Unfortunately, I will not be eating the crepes. I think it's day 11 and here is my breakfast. I got a non-stick pan and so the omelet really came together. But day 10, uh, yesterday I had a, a couple bites of things that weren't on the diet. So I had a bite of a crepe, one of Emily's crepes. And I ate like one chip um, and had like one 
shot of tequila at the pool yesterday. But other than that, I was I was on the diet, so did really, really well. Yesterday was tough just because I was around so much food that I couldn't really eat. You know, I'll say it seems like the first five days, first week, the progress was really, really apparent really quick. Um, it seems like the second five days, so day like six through 10 or six through 11, the progress has slowed down a little bit, but there is still progress. My stomach is starting to slim up. I can definitely tell. Um, and then I think really the telling angle is the side view. It feels like um, just how thick I am, both in my love handles and in my stomach has slimmed up. Um, and my muscles are beginning to show through a little bit more. So I'm about two weeks away from my Florida trip and my friend's wedding. So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, put together a ab and fat burning checklist. And so the next two weeks, I'm really going to, um, you know, I'm gonna stay on the diet, but I'm really gonna focus on doing more activities that promote burning fat and just see how lean can I get if I'm really disciplined. So I am calling this my daily six pack checklist. I don't think I'm gonna do this every day because it's a lot of stuff, um, but I'm gonna try to do this most days and at least kind of rotate through it. So the first thing is waking up, drinking water and getting a little bit of elevating my heart rate in the first like 30 minutes of getting up. So. Waking up and drinking water allegedly is supposed to boost your, or start up your metabolism. So, and it's just a good thing to do in the morning, making sure to drink water and staying hydrated. I think I've been going straight to coffee. So I wanna drink water in the mornings. Also wanna elevate my heart rate and nothing crazy, but do maybe a little jump rope um, within the first 30 minutes of waking up. Maybe do some push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, just something to get the heart rate kind of up. Number three is good sleep. Luckily, I'm good at this. I'm a great sleeper, uh, but continue to sleep. And then um, one thing I've been doing and will keep doing is rotational strength training. So still going to the gym at least 30 minutes, lifting weights so that I don't lose muscle. Being in a calorie deficit, you start to lose muscle. So I wanna keep my muscle, wanna continue doing strength training. So another thing is five to 10 minutes of a ab workout every single day. The next thing, and this is the one that I'll be adding in, but I think it could be the biggest, and this is kind of what will burn the most fat, is low intensity aerobic exercise. So that's something like walking for 30 to 60 minutes, um, you know, light biking 30 to 60 minutes, could be a very light jog 30 to 60 minutes. The last two are really bonus points. They're not gonna have as much of an effect, but if I feel so disciplined and crazy that I can, it's great. One is cold showers. This has been proven to be effective, um, but cold showers will be something that if I'm feeling it and feeling like a beast that day, I'll take a cold shower instead of hot shower. The other is a sauna. That's my ab training check checklist or my six pack checklist. I'm hoping that I can take the kind of results I already have over the past two weeks, um, make a few tweaks, a little bit of extra commitment and amplify those results so that in one month, this is gonna be kind of the, the full time zone on the slow carb diet. Um, in one month that, you know, we'll have crazy results. Just got done with a 35 minute bike ride around lunchtime, and that is the low aerobic exercise for me. Day 14, so two weeks on this low carb diet, um, and this is day two of a more intense routine. I just got back from the gym. I did shoulders, did uh, arms, shoulders and arms, and abs. Um, I can definitely tell now that one, I'm losing weight, and I'm losing weight quickly. Quickly, I think I've lost about seven pounds so far um, in 14 days, which is really fast. And that's probably too fast. It means that I think I'm losing some muscle along with fat. Even though I've been going to the gym, I can tell that I'm not feeling as strong um, and that I think I am losing muscle. I still am working out a lot. I really wanna shed as much fat as I can. Um, so I'm gonna kind of stick with these uh, two different workouts each day and see how much fat I can lose. Um, I know it probably will be at the expense of some muscle. For now, time for a hot bike ride. 
uh, just after my workout and then that should be really it for the checklist. Um, this weekend though will be a little bit of a challenging weekend. So it's one of my friends uh, bachelor parties and we're going to a lake house and it's just gonna be a weekend with the boys um, and there's gonna be drinking and eating and, and all that fun stuff um, so this weekend you know I've been really good the past two weeks of not really breaking the diet I have had one cheat meal and then a couple cheat bites on no there was another day where I had like a bite of a crepe and like one potato chip last Saturday this weekend there's gonna be a little bit more leniency um, what I'm gonna try to do is really stick to the diet as much as I can. Um, but with knowing that I'm gonna be drinking more um, and knowing that I'm just gonna be around food and having a good time, I don't wanna be just a complete stickler. So there's a few things I'm gonna do. One, I'm gonna try to drink alcohol that is a little bit closer to the diet for me. So normally I'm a big beer drinker, especially when all the boys get together. Um, but this week, you know, get in a box of wine. And so wine is gonna be kind of the drink of choice. Um, but then also if I really do, um, I think we're going out on the lake one day. If I really do wanna crack a cold one, I've got some white claws and they're technically not on the diet, but they are very, very low carbs. Um, so I think they are a bit closer to the diet than say a beer. Uh, the last option I have is sparkling water with a little bit of vodka. So those are kind of my drink options. Instead of just chugging beers like I normally do or drinking whiskey, uh, it's gonna be those slightly healthier options. Um, as far as food goes, um, so typically we pig out, we go crazy, we feast when we're there. Um, you know, and, and luckily I still kind of get to do that. But you know, what I'll feast on is more so the proteins. Um, and then instead of having things like mashed potatoes, um, sweet potatoes, rice and stuff like that, I'll just bring a whole bunch of beans. So I stocked up on beans. I'm gonna be bringing beans, um, a bunch of tuna packets for snacking. I'll bring my egg white for breakfast. So between, you know, some chicken, a bunch of sausage, some steak, um, I should have plenty of protein. And then of course, I have a bunch of veggies that'll cook up for everyone there too. So, you know, I'm planning this weekend on really staying pretty close to the slow carb diet. But of course, you know, I wanna have fun and celebrate my friend getting married. So gonna have fun and not really gonna let the diet get in the way, um, but try to just kind of plan around and, and be a little bit more flexible and with a little bit of planning ahead think I should be able to integrate that diet into a great weekend without having it bother myself or anyone. I'm the captain of this ship. Um, where I was going off for a bachelor party weekend. Um, so, handful of things happened. One, I was able to really stick to the diet really well. With the forethought and planning, I brought food that I was able to eat. I brought tons of asparagus, tons of Brussels sprouts, and then lots of just like meat and protein and, uh, and then beans. And so, luckily, I was kind of responsible for food for everyone, and so I just cooked tons of veggies, tons of protein, um, and then beans. Now I will say where I did go way off was drinking. Um, luckily too, I brought wine um, and I brought seltzers, which are very low carb, like two grams of carbs, I was drinking White Claws. Um, and so I was able to drink mostly that, um, but we did cheers. Uh, my, my friend who's getting married and had a shot of whiskey, um, I did end up having a couple beers after I ran out of my seltzers. Um, and so, and then just overall, I probably drank way too much, way more than I should on the diet. But really for a bachelor party weekend, um, I stuck really close to the diet. It takes a lot of work to make this type of progress as fast as I am, or at least with my body type, because Man, let me tell you, for two weeks, 
And you know, even before that, I was working my butt off in the gym, but I was eating anything. For the last two weeks, man, just so strict on my diet, so strict on my workouts. I really have been working my, working my ass off. Um, and like I said, I just finished a, a hot garage leg workout plus abs, and now I'm about to go on a 30 minute bike ride. So I'm putting in a ton of work, um, and it's just kind of crazy how much work it, it actually takes for me and my body to eat, to be able to achieve, you know, abs. A little over two weeks into the slow carb diet, and 165.6, that is about nine pounds less um, than I started. That is crazy. And this would be about my 40th can of beans in the past three weeks. Um, and I will say the progress has been amazing. I have lost around 10 pounds and I'll have that kind of final update tomorrow morning with the physique. Um, the diet hasn't been the hardest, but at this point I am definitely ready to eat beans. Um, kind of after this weekend and the bachelor party, it's been much, much harder to get back on the diet. I lost a little bit of momentum for both the diet and um, working out and just haven't really caught my energy back. Um, so last night I did end up eating some sushi that had rice, so kind of broke the diet there. Um, and then had just like one piece of chocolate. So I uh, have broken the diet a little bit this week, not much, um, but today really is gonna be, you know, about one of the last days. Definitely have put in some some hard work and it seems to have uh, paid off. You know, has been three pretty hard weeks. Um, part of me wishes that with all this work and discipline and stuff I've been doing that I would have, you know, like a six pack of chiseled abs, but um, I still think the progress was great. And it was a great lesson and a great, you know, just way for me to experiment and pull the trigger on trying something that ultimately is making me healthier. So I think that's amazing. So I'm gonna go enjoy my evening little skate. It's a beautiful day out. Um, work out just a little bit of a sweat. Uh, and then we're gonna shower and call it a day. So tomorrow's it, tomorrow's the final weigh in. We'll check in the morning on final kind of physique comparisons and some notes and then we'll be off to vacation for this guy. It is the last day of the slow carb diet. Um, been 22 or 23 days now, a little over three weeks. So let's see what the weight is. 165.6. All right, 165.6. That is down around 10 pounds, maybe a little closer to eight or nine. Um, yesterday I actually weighed a little bit less, but that is crazy amount of weight. Um, so it's been 22 days, around eight to 10 pounds in that amount of time. It is the moment that, I don't know if you have been waiting for, but I sure have, um, because it's the results time. It's been 22, 23 days, a little over three weeks on the slow carb diet, and I'm about to show you the results. Um, and I'm really pleased with them. But first, let's have a quick reminder of what I looked like before going on this diet. Here I am turning around, you can see a little more fat, and here are the results, finally, in three, two, one. So here we go. Here is my, what I look like after doing 22, 23 days on the slow carb diet. Um, you can probably tell right off the bat, um, but I definitely am slimmer. I'm about 10 pounds lighter, a little less than 10 pounds. Um, my muscle definition, my muscles might have gotten a bit smaller, lost a little bit of muscle mass, but overall the definition is probably a little bit better as I've gotten a little bit trimmer. So really happy with the results, really pleased. And of course I got my swimsuit on because we're about to go to the beach. You know, I can kind of see the top two abs Kind of see a little shape here. 
Um, and there's still some fat both on my, my love handles, which are pretty persnickety, and my lower stomach. Um, and that's really just about all the fat on my body. It's just very persnickety location. I'm sure if I were to probably do this for another month, it'd probably take two months of this diet to actually see my abs. But I think this is going to be sufficient for me. I'm feeling pretty good. Well, that's that's really it. That's going to be kind of the end of this crazy three week experiment with the slow carb diet. Um, and I wanted to share a few of my thoughts. Overall, I thought it went really, really well, and I learned a ton of great things. Um, as the before and after kind of results show, um, you can definitely see the progress. So as an effective way to lose fat, get leaner and trimmer, um, it worked wonders. There are a few things that I will call out. Um, first, I'll start with things I like. The first thing I liked was the fact that it had results. You could clearly tell that I lost weight, I looked trimmer, and I think if I did that for a longer period of time, I would actually get the abs that I was kind of looking for. The other thing that I liked was how consistent I was able to be with it and how consistent the diet is. Part of the rules going into it is you want to try to keep it as consistent as possible. And so cooking my meals and eating was all really, really simple, and it meant that I always knew what I was gonna be eating, and it just took that kind of decision and cooking uh, kind of out of the picture. The, the third thing that I liked about it was the general uh, energy that I had. Um, this wasn't the most high energy I've been, but for being in a calorie deficit, I did feel really good most days. You know, there were a few days where I was tired here and there. Didn't feel like I had the energy to work out super hard, but overall, I thought I did have a good amount of energy for being in a calorie deficit and restricting my diet so much. Um, so overall, this is definitely something that I enjoyed, love the results from, and will probably do again. Now, there were a few drawbacks, one being the sheer amount of food I couldn't eat, um, and it took a lot of discipline. I was very happy with the amount of discipline that I had and was able to really stick to the diet very, very well, um, but it was a lot of work, and every time a friend was eating an Oreo or Emily would get a glass of milk or made some sort of cookie or brownie or even grabbed a bag of chips, um, or even ate rice or potatoes. I just had to say no, and that was really, really difficult. I love food so much, and I love all types of food, and having to restrict my diet was very challenging, um, but that's really part of it. Luckily, the cheat day once a week kind of helped um, get over some of those cravings, but still on a day-to-day -day basis, so much diet restriction is a difficult thing. The other thing that was a little bit of a downside was the loss of strength. And I think this has to do with the fact that I was probably in too much of a calorie deficit on most days. Typically, if you're losing weight, you wanna aim at 200 calories kind of below your maintenance level. So for me, that probably would have been around 2,200 calories a day. Um, and probably most days I, I ended up around 2,000 calories. So was probably losing a little too much weight a little too quickly, which meant that my muscles were probably losing some muscle mass as well. I could tell in the gym, my lifts um, were a little bit weaker. I didn't feel like I had as much lifting energy. And overall, I think I did lose a little bit of muscle mass um, as well as fat. So that was a downside. Um, and you know, the last thing that really kind of stunk is that uh, I just ate so many beans that I started to get tired of beans. Um, really, I, I ate tons of beans. I ate almost 40 cans of beans in the last 22 days. Um, so tons of beans, and I really liked them for the most part, but here in the past couple days, it's been, you know, I've ate like uh, my dinner, and so I'd have veggies and some sort of lean protein, and after that, it'd be like, I'd still be hungry and be like, oh, I want anything but beans right now. And so this is a diet that if taken to the extreme, I don't know if I'd be able to stick on it for a very long time. I don't think I'd be able to manage this ongoing um, just because of all the restrictions. But I think what I'll do 
is implement some of the learnings into my diet going forward. And so, you know, I learned how disciplined I can be and how much like there are some foods that I ended up cutting out that I really won't miss that much. So instead of having, uh, you know, heavy starchy carbs like potatoes or rice, you know, I can probably say no to those and eat more veggies and protein and then substitute some of those meals for beans. And so that will be just an ongoing tool that I can have in my toolbox that says, hey, if I'm starting to like gain some weight or I wanna slim down a little bit, literally substituting some of the heavy carbs I eat for beans is, is actually a really good strategy to um, you know, implement. You know, another thing I learned was kind of about my workout routines. I was doing more ab workouts and that was starting to show on my abs. Um, but then also doing some lower uh, heart rate uh, aer aerobic training. So a bike ride and, and things of that nature started to, to kind of slim me down. Um, you know, the last thing is like being a little more selective of what I'm eating or drinking. So, and if I'm trying to be healthier in the future, want to lose a little bit of weight or slim up, instead of grabbing the beers, you know, I'll stick to either wine or seltzers, you know, and, and just being able to, to cut out things like dairy, cut out fruit that I love. Um, a little bit of trimming on the diet really can help, you know, flex my weight. And so now I feel like I have another tool in my tool belt that says, if I ever for any reason just need to get back into shape, want to get back into shape, slim up, look good or whatever it is the reason is maybe i have an athletic event coming up i now know some of the tools that i can take to get there and the slow carb diet is definitely going to be one of those tools that is going to be just another tool in my tool belt for managing my life lifestyle weight and uh, health so great overall um, but that's really going to do it for the slow carb diet video i appreciate you sticking through um, the results were amazing. I hope it was entertaining. I loved doing it, doing this other crazy experiment. Um, going forward, I'll probably be off the diet, but will probably imp implement more beans, less carbs, um, and see if I can watch some of the things that I eat more. So being willing to say no to a dessert just a little bit more often, or instead of grabbing the, you know, uh, beer, grabbing a seltzer, a glass of wine, things like that. Just little tweaks to my diet and lifestyle that will hopefully mean I'll be just a little bit healthier going forward. But we are going to be off to the beach and there's another video coming up on that. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking in with me, trying an experiment, which I encourage you to try as well. And as always, thank you for keeping it real with Ryan.